everyone, thank you so much for joining us here today. If you're new, I'm Amanda. Welcome to the channel where we are all about shattering the mental health stigma. Before we continue, make sure you click that subscribe button so you're not missing any of these vlogs about mental health, any of my celebrity interviews, or any of my song reactions. Today, I have the most special guest ever. This is my son, Bryce, and say hello to the channel. Hi. And he had a fabulous idea that he wanted to share something with you guys. So why are we here today, Bryston? We're here to show our little boxes. We call them our quiet boxes. And we use them for stress, anger, sadness, or any other emotion we're feeling at that moment. And what are we on right now? We are on our quiet square that we do the emotions I just gave an example of. Sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I really struggle with stress, anxiety, panic attacks, that sort of thing. And when you're in that kind of mindset, it's really hard to think logistically and it's really hard to think about what you can do. So this for me helps me have ideas of what I can do to either get through that moment, to improve the moment, basically to cope with the stress or anxiety or depression or anger or all those emotions that he was talking about. What's your box? My box helps me with this thing I have in my head that's called my bus. And my bus is like something that I have to control in my head over anger or like saying I hate you mom or you're stupid because I call that the, um, the evil bus driver and I have to kick him out of that bus to c take control of that and this is what that's for. So this is my box I've had since I was three and I've always loved it since. The first thing you guys probably saw was this little husky or wolf but we have a husky downstairs that we named Tara. She's a little cutie and she always loves playing. And I forgot how old she was though. <laughs> this one, oops, oops, is my little jar that I had. I've had this for a very long time. I had to replace the lid, but I've had this for a very long time and I shake it when I'm angry or sad and this is all my sadness or anger and then when it calms down I'm just peace. I just feel peace all around my body. This one, everybody should know what this is. This is a dream catcher that this is what helps me feel safe when I'm with when I'm sleeping or when I'm in the dark, I go under there and get in all my blankets and I don't forget to t touch it, like touch all the way around the circle and feel the feathers. This one, if you're a kid like me, you should always ask a parent for help. Their vitamins, oh, vegan CBD. D um, gummies and they I always feel the burst of flavor because it's um, it has fruit fruit flavors in it so I can always feel like the burst of flavors just go into my mouth now this one has a little bit of French in it it says with Charlie you guys know who he is right yep you guessed it it's where's Waldo there's little cards that you show with Felicia, which is, um, I forgot the name of Waldo's sister. I forgot, but she, there's little cards. You have to look around for her and if you can find her, it's, there's a bunch of cards though, too. Let's see, I just get a bunch of cards but there's a bunch of cards in there now this one is for yoga you open the little box or I do and I always like doing yoga a little bit of yoga before I go to bed and I take out a pose this one's called cat cross it like helps 
with like when I'm when I need to stretch right before bed or I just don't like what pose I'm in when I'm when I'm about to go to sleep I just follow the steps and do it oh and by the way if you guys know what this is but you guys probably don't but we do watch this um, we do this yoga thing with my mom she likes a lot of yoga too but we do this called aid this yoga called Adrian and Benji Benji is a little dog she always likes sitting with when she does yoga but she helps us with like when we're stressed it stressed it f helps us feel like peace spread through our body when we do it this one the these two things th i have a family called baka and they help with kids that are like in like when they feel unsafe you can call them and you and it, when you call them, you can talk to them, and then that might make you feel safer. That's what it always does to me. This one was when my mom left for a couple weeks. She, we both made each other a little kiss thing. This says, caring is everything. But she gave a kiss, and I, every time I feel I missed her when in that time. I always put it on my cheek and it always helped me feel, feel safer. Just like these guys. I have a three of these actually, just like my mom showed it for her box. I have three pictures in a booth um, of her and me when she's gone. Like when I really want to see her. I just look at these three pictures and it helps me remember her, what she looks like. Sometimes I forget what she looks like. This is a little like soggy, but it got a, lot, a little wet, but it's a little monster spray that we sold and helped people. But I think we gave some for free. Oops. And you can spray it around when you feel scared on your pillow, like at night when it's pitch black and you feel like there's monsters anywhere. You can put it under, in your pillow or in the air and it might help you feel safer. That's what it does to me. It helps me feel safer. This one, I need to get it out. Ugh. There we go. Ah. So... Open this. So this one's a farm in numbers. That's what it starts with. But the farm is like when the my mom made this book, by the way, when I was young. And it helped me when I was sad or I didn't feel like I was bored or anything or I was stressed. I was picked them all of them off Bill Road and put them on the correct thing. The, the farm has little duckies. You can play puppets with them when you didn't like want to be wait when you wanted to be alone, but you just like playing with little things. This is Jake and the Neverland Pirates and there's a little hide and seek coins that you have to look for when and then put them back in the chest. They're here. If you guys watched the show, the show, you guys probably saw Izzy. No, Izzy. Cubby. And everybody should know this one if they watch the show. Jake. And that was one of my favorite parts of the book. And then we get this one. This one is a book that I loved too. It, it was one of my 
favorite books too, I think. But the very hungry caterpillar. He always ate and ate and ate until he got full. All the food that he ate and well, but when he goes into a, his cocoon. He becomes a butterfly. I think that's the end of my box. I am so excited to share this with you guys so that hopefully, like I said, you can get some ideas while you're going through stressful situations and might not know how to cope, right? So I am so excited to share with you what is in my personal box. We're gonna start, of course, with essential oils. We talked about that a little bit in my last video when I was interviewing Dr. Lindsay Elmore about essential oils. That kinda happens to be her specialty. But I have this one, it's called Panic Button, and it's specifically an infusion just for anxiety. So you can use this as a pillow spray, or you can just kinda spray it all over yourself when you're freaking out. So this is really good when I just need to ground, when I need to come back from that place of having an anxiety or panic attack. And this one's very similar, it's called Mellow Mix. And this one's kind of honestly for when I'm just feeling a little bit of stress and I'm looking to breathe, to have a reason to breathe, to have that uh, kind of calming, you know, focal point. That's more what I use Mellow Mix for. I have several other essential oil blends, but these are the two that I keep in here because they help most with uh, my anxiety and stress. And on the topic of scents, this one is a little less uh, mainstream, I guess, but this is old school Vicks Vapor Rub. And I don't know when, but somewhere between my childhood and current day, they changed the formula. This specific Vicks Vapor Rub was in my mom's purse when she passed away, but she used to rub this on my chest uh, when I was younger, when I was sick, or when I was having a really bad day. She rubbed this on my chest and she'd always draw it in little hearts or write out I love you or whatever. So just smelling this not only helps me breathe because it kind of opens the throat, it helps the breathing uh, become fuller and that really helps when you're having a panic or anxiety attack or you're hyperventilating, but it also you know, brings back those childhood memories of my mom taking care of me and comforting me. So this is a huge thing and I don't like whatever they changed. I love the old formula. So I don't typically even use this. I most of the time just smell it. This is some zinc lozenges. I am really big on having something in your mouth because it just, when it releases that burst of flavor, it has to be something strong, like chili candy or lemons or gum or something that just has a really strong flavor because that kind of snaps me back into reality, snaps me back into the present moment and I tend to focus more on that. So these are really good. They help me relax, they're elderberry, but it's just something to give that really powerful flavor without eating junk food or without having to have something really, really uh, sugary sweet, something very strong because you don't want to eat a lot of sugar because that's going to make the stress and anxiety worse. So these are really good and they're also really, really great for when you're not feeling good, uh, when you have a cough, when your throat itches. They are great for that, but me, I just kind of use them uh, as my, my snap back into reality when I'm having anxiety. These are Joppa beads and I was given these at uh, grief support group for when uh, I lost my mom. They gave out these drop of beads. I actually have a set of mala beads as well. They are rose quartz. They were given to me by someone very, very special to me. Uh, but essentially you just think of a mantra or a quote or something, and then you just repeat that once for each bead. And of course you can do this out loud or you can just close your eyes and repeat it in your head. It's all up to you, what's available to you at the moment, but sometimes it really just helps refocus the brain uh, because if you're in that cycle of intrusive thoughts or you're in that cycle of, man, I hate everything or I'm such a failure or whatever your negative thought cycle or tapes might be, it really helps to have those mantras that you can repeat over and over to help override that. So that's why I have this. Uh, there's more on the mala beads. This one, the drop of beads has fewer. Uh, the mala beads has more, it has over hundred, I believe. I forget the exact number, but it's really wonderful just to, like I said, uh, have a way to count, you know, without actually counting, say 40 times or whatever, 50 times, hundred times, you're just really ingraining that mantra or that thought in your head. This one you might laugh a little bit at, but this was my very first Ninja Turtle. And <laughs> my parents weren't super well off, so 
I remember we found this at one of the discount grocery stores, I believe it was Aldi's, and I used to never wanna talk about that, but <laughs> at my age now, I've kinda of come to that place of realizing that it doesn't matter, you know? My parents loved me, and we were a great, happy family, and I have such fond memories of this Ninja Turtle because I was so excited to get it at the end of that grocery trip, and I spent hours and hours and hours playing with, uh, with them. So just going back to that place of my inner child and having some nostalgia, having a moment where I don't have to adult <laughs> because it does get to a point where sometimes I just don't feel like being an adult. I don't feel like taking care of everything or doing a million things. And of course you always have to take care of your responsibilities, but sometimes there's absolutely nothing wrong with sitting on the floor and reconnecting with your childhood. And I promise you, whatever you liked as a kid, you're probably going to like now. I actually reconnected with uh, rollerblading during quarantine and realized that I still absolutely loved it. This is my little, I know it's supposed to be a husky, but I kind of correlate it as a wolf. And I also have wolf hair in here that I got off of a wolf uh, when I was doing some charity work for the organization that I had started the Humane Outreach for Wolves League, which uh, was all about wolf conservation and education. But the wolf has always been a very powerful symbol for me. When I was younger, I believed that it was my spirit animal and it always had the symbol of protection, strength, uh, independence. There's just so many things that the wolf represents for me. And interestingly enough, the wolf is one of the few species that actually um, is monogamous. They choose a partner for life and, uh, and don't stray from that typically. And just me, I'm in love with love and me being so much about love and romance and stuff, that was a very special trait for me. Uh, so just having that, that source of strength, you know, to, to reconnect to nature in that way to connect to something that's always symbolized strength and power for me. Next you guys are going to get to see something kind of special. This is my baby picture. It's my mom and my dad and me when I was a baby. And if you've been here on the channel for a bit, you might know that my mom and dad passed away when I was in my early 20s, so well over a decade ago now. And sometimes I really just need their guidance, I need to reflect on what they would have done or the advice they would have given me. And this is just a tangible reminder. It's just something that I can look at and kind of talk to and just think, what would my mom have told me to do right now? Or would my dad have given me a high five for having got through this situation, for having got through this difficulty, this challenge? So it's just a very tangible way for me to reconnect with them and their energy because everything I do, including this channel and my outreach, is in their honor and in their memory. And that's their energy coming through me. I'm living on their honor and it's just, I, I really need sometimes to sit down and look at them and just go, Am I making them proud? Am I living a life that they would be proud of? And I hope the answer is yes. Likewise, I also have a little picture of Bryston, who you just got to meet. It's a picture of me and Bryston from one of those photo booths. And I, I share custody with his dad. So we have a week on and a week off. And he's not always with me. And sometimes just remembering how I stayed strong when I stepped down off that ledge, what gave me the motivation to go on because it was this little guy. And I'm sure that now you can see why, uh, but just having that visual reminder when I, in that dark place in my mind of knowing that I have this little guy who loves me and believes in me and I have something to fight for always. These are little cards that I got when I was in DBT therapy for borderline personality disorder or BPD. And number one, there's little Zelda on here and her part of the Triforce stood for wisdom. So I thought that was very poetic to have her on uh, the little flashcards for my skills, for my DBT skills. But there's a lot of different things. Like I said, when you're in that, that emotional mind, it's really, really hard to think of skills or to think of what the most effective Thing to do in the moment is and this goes through a lot of different skills from emotional regulation skills when your anger is just out of control your sadness is just out of control and you really need to find effective ways to cope with those emotions interpersonal effectiveness so if you have to interact with someone else the most effective way to do that distress tolerance so if you're in a place where you can't change the situation and you just kind of have to ride the wave different ways to do that uh, acceptance skills so again, if you just have to accept the situation for how it is instead of trying to change it, 
um, mindfulness. Mindfulness is the core thing of borderline personality disorder. Um, it's the core skill. So some different ideas for mindfulness that, you know, they might seem common sense when you're in your, your typical day-to-day -day state of mind, but when you get in that place of stress or anxiety or panic and you're in that emotional mind and you're not in wise mind, so there's emotional mind and there's rational mind and you want to stay in the middle. You don't want to be all emotional. You don't want to be all rational. You want to stay in the middle in that wise mind. So this is meant to help you get there. It really just helps to remember those skills during those times of intense uh, dysregulation or stress. And this is kind of similar. I'm talking about forgetting, you know, when you're in that state of mind, when you're freaking out and you're just not sure what to do and you're kind of just completely tripping out. I wrote a letter to myself when I was in my normal state of mind, when I wasn't dysregulating, I wrote a letter to myself about what I wanted to hear pretty much when I was in those really intense, states where I might be having a panic attack or I might be dysregulating. I wrote a little letter to myself because at the end of the day, there isn't always going to be someone else there to tell you all the things that you want to hear. And you might not be in your right state of mind to be able to tell yourself those things. So I'm going to read you my letter. It's not too long, I promise. But it says, if you're reading this, it must be one of those days. You may want to scream. You may be in tears. You may hate everything from the dogs to the grass to the pain in the wall. No one seems to be able to do anything right, yourself included. The people you loved yesterday are now the enemy, even if they did nothing wrong. That's just it. It's all perspective. You've already weathered the most intense of situations, even those that seemed impossible. You survived then and you'll survive now. Remember the Dumbledore quote, happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. Where's your switch right now? Are you hungry? Eat a bowl of cereal or a veggie burger or a bar or some veggies or chips. Are you overwhelmed? Let Bryston watch a show. Chores and projects can wait. Your sanity is more important. Are you feeling isolated or abandoned? Invite someone over to hang out, to watch a show, go out to lunch, have a picnic, play games. And then it goes on to say, call one of your friends and specifically list out some of my friends. You've come a long way since your teen years, a long way since losing your mom, a long way even in the last year. And then it goes on to uh, talk about some of the things that I've done in the last year, some of my accomplishments. You are valuable and there will always be someone who cares. At least one person thinks the world of you and or admires you. If you must walk away from something, do it when you have a clear mind and can think rationally and not from emotion. It's okay to cry, or scream in a pillow, but don't dwell on passing emotions. Love you. These I don't use particularly frequently anymore, but especially when I first stopped self-harming, this was something that really helped me have something to do with my hands. They're just little Chinese stress balls and you just roll them around in your hands. They make a little chiming sound as you can hear but it really helped just give my hands something to do. You know, they say idle hands are the devil's play toy. We're not talking about Tom Ellis and Lucifer here. Uh, and it really just occupied that. And it, it was very effective at the time because I knew that I just needed to have that fixation. I just needed to get through the moment. I talked about some of the other skills in one of my last videos that I went through uh, in managing self-harm, but this was one of the things that just sometimes helped me ride the wave out. So, but these are really great. If you're just needing to have something to do to get through the moment. And they're really, I, I love the little chime sound. There's not a whole lot of wind here most of the time. So having that nice little pretty chime sound can be very relaxing. This is special paper. It's called flying wish paper. So you write something on it and then you light it on fire and it kind of flies up in the air. And number one, it's very awesome for me because, you know, I'm very big on writing, on manifesting, on law of attraction. So writing things out often helps bring things into fruition. But also when I'm trying to let go of something, fire is huge for me. Elements in general are huge for me. So the symbology of burning it and letting it go and watching it just disappear into the universe is really, really, really helpful for me. So if I'm feeling certain thoughts or emotions, just writing them down, torching them and watching them float away. 
but it kind of crackles and I really like that. The next one is something that I don't really do when I'm really super stressed out, but if I'm just feeling a little stressed and I just need to dip into my box a little bit, this is just a little book that has wisdom from The Four Agreements, which is a book that a lot of people find very helpful in having kind of a blueprint uh, for, for life, kind of rules. It's almost like a Ten Commandments in many ways. Uh, and of course, Christians can use it in tangent with the Ten Commandments. Anybody can use it, but it just has some little motivations and quotes and stuff. So it's not something I'd use in more intense emotional situations, but if I just need a little pick me up, this is a really good go-to. These are really awesome when you're in that really emotional state of mind and you need to get to more rational, uh, reasonable state of mind. Your goal again is to be in the middle, but switching sides of the brain is really, really important. And I find it very effective to do puzzles, especially Sudoku. Sometimes I'll do the word finds, but I really like Sudoku because it forces your brain to become more logistical. It forces your brain to switch sides so you're not in that emotional state anymore. And I, I will do this. I've done these at two in the morning sometimes if I start having anxiety and I can't sleep or I'm really struggling, just bringing my brain uh, back to that rational and eventual wise mind. This was a meditation that was given to me by Swami Kriyananda, who, if you don't know who that is, I will uh, put a link in the description below just so you know what I'm talking about. But essentially, he was a guru and amazing, amazing man, had an amazing life story, very, very inspirational. But this was a little meditation that he had given me, and I still cherish it. I went to uh, Ananda services when I was in my 20s, and it's just very simple. It's very peaceful. It has a great uh, visualization that involves light and just bliss. The whole point is that self-existing bliss and I really like that. Uh, and sometimes just, you know, reading it to myself and kind of bringing a different visualization in my mind is amazing. And I loved his energy. He was always such a happy man uh, that I loved his energy. So I could kind of feel that through his meditation. And the last one, my mom, when she went to nursing school, when I was younger, I was very scared because she'd never left for any extended period of time. And she was gonna be gone for several days uh, for this weekend training. And she gave me this, it's called my mommy blanket. And she told me that if I ever needed a hug from her to just wrap it around me and she'd be there. So there's been many times in my adult life when I'm scared or I'm sad and she's not here with me anymore in, in person in this physical sense. So just wrapping this around me and getting a hug from her, sometimes just feeling that energy, that comfort um, is amazing. It means everything to me. Guys, thank you so much for joining us here today. I hope that you enjoyed the special lesson. Like I said, this was his idea to share this with you guys and hopefully help you have ideas on how to cope when you get in those stressful situations or if you're like me and you're a parent and you're at home with your lovely cherubs all summer, you might have some ideas to help them get through their stressful situations. So let us know in the comments below. Let us know in the comments below what you are going to put in your box, what you already have in your box. If you have something similar, we are very excited to read the comments and hear all about it. So let us know, of course. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell or and like and for more of our future videos. Because I think he might be coming back. So let us know also if there's anything you would like to see or like to hear or any ideas that you have for future videos with this little guy because he's excited to be part of shattering the mental health stigma, part of this conversation. I love you guys so much. Mm -hmm.